What's up, Spartans? Happy first Wednesday after break. As always, I'm Luke. And it's been so long that I actually forgot my name. We'll talk about today's show. After news and announcements. Yesterday, Iran launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles that targeted at least two Iraqi military bases, hosting U.S. and coalition forces in Iraq. These launches came less than a week after the U.S. killed top Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, commander of its Quds Force, in an airstrike. The assessment of any casualties and damage began last night, but no official word of any deaths has come out. Trump tweeted, quote, all is well, and quote, so far, so good, last night after the missiles were launched, and he said he'll be making a statement this morning. The Canadian Chief of the Defense Staff, General Jonathan Vance, tweeted that all of its deployed armed forces and personnel are safe and accounted for. Jonathan Hoffman, the Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Department of Defense for Public Affairs, said in the Pentagon statement, that the bases had been on high alert due to indications that the Iranian regime planned on attacking the armed forces and interests in the region. Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Sarif tweeted that Iran took and concluded proportionate measures in self-defense under Article 51 of the United Nations Charter. Zarif said that if they don't seek to escalation or war, but they will defend themselves against any aggression. On Wednesday in Shahed Shahar, Iran, a Ukrainian passenger jet carrying 176 people crashed on the outside of Tehran into fields of flaming debris. Just happening hours after Iran launched ballistic missile attacks on two Iraqi bases housing U.S. soldiers, Iranian officials first stated that it was due to a mechanical issue, but later backed away and declined to offer a cause to the crash. All people on board that housed 82 Iranians, 63 Canadians, and 11 Ukrainians and others all died due to the crash. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. ESM DECA will be holding a staff versus student basketball game in the large gymnasium at the high school on January 12th. We are looking for faculty and students to participate. In order to participate, each player will need to raise $30 and you will receive a free t-shirt on a first-come, first-served basis. The first 20 students and the first 20 f staff members will be signed up. All proceeds will go to the ESM Youth Sports Foundation. See Rachel Underwood, Cameron Ure, or come down to B4 if you would like to participate and or have any questions. Seniors, make sure you check your senior quote in room D14 before Friday, January 17th. If you don't verify your quote, it won't be printed in the yearbook. See Ms. Mr. Stalick for any questions. Happy New Year, Yogis of ESM will start back up on Thursday, January 16th at 3.30 p.m. in the library. Set an intention or to start practicing yoga and join us. Wear comfortable clothes and bring a friend. Namaste. So as many people know, the NFL playoffs started this weekend. And I'm mad because the Steelers didn't get in, and the Bills lost, and NFL is just not real anymore. Just, just calm down, and nobody cares. But anyways, the Houston Texans did play against the Buffalo Bills in the first game on Saturday. Yeah, and they blew a 16-0 lead. <laughs> yes, Deshaun Watson led a comeback in the second half, throwing for 247 yards. Josh Allen wouldn't stop fumbling the ball. All right, you need to stop. And the Texans will play the Chiefs next weekend. And now the game that everyone liked, except for Patriots fans, of course. The Patriots lost to the tie, and the Patriots lost to the tie, please, and... Please, just stop. Sorry. But anyways, Titans running back Derrick Henry ran over the Patsy defense with 182 rushing yards. And for the first time since 01, that's 2001, Tom Brady threw a pick six in a playoff game, because he's old, and he needs to retire. We'll talk about the NFC games after weather. blustery through the rest of the day and temperatures are going to be dropping into the evening. The morning high is near 32 but falling through the 20s the rest of the day. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be a more quiet and chilly day with a high in the low 30s. 
Friday will be breezy and milder with some rain and a high in the 40s. Saturday will have heavy rain developing with highs in the mid 50s. Sunday will be a little bit cooler with highs in the mid 40s. And then Monday and Tuesday will drop into the low 40s again. I'm Allie with your weather. Welcome back. Now it's time to talk about the worst conference in the NFL. No, it's better um, except for the NFC East, but... Fair enough. Any hoozle, the Minnesota Vikings beat the New Orleans Saints 26-20 to in a very interesting game that went into overtime. Vikings receiver Adam Thielen led the team with 129 receiving yards and seven receptions. And for, as for the Saints, all you need to know is that basically Taysom Hill did everything. And in overtime, Adam Thielen had a 43-yard catch, with led, which led to the controversial game-winning touchdown by Kyle Rudolph. Now let's move on to the game that Luke, I know, is very excited to talk about. What? Oh, yeah, the Seahawks game. That's your team. Oh, I was expecting more enthusiasm. Yeah, the Seattle Seahawks beat the Philadelphia Eagles 17-9. Uh, rookie receiver DK Metcalf set a record for most receiving yards for a rookie in their playoff debut with 160. Hey, John, he kind of looks like you. Really? Thanks, Luke. You know, I've been working out, trying this new protein stuff. No, you know, no, no. I, I was, John, I was kidding. Of course you don't look like him. Ouch. The ESM wrestling team tied Auburn 36-36 last night. Ali Abuda and Mike O'Brien both had pins. The girls basketball team took a tough loss last night against Oswego. The boys basketball team defeated Oswego 71-72 to 42 last night to improve to 8-1. Nick Peterson led the team with 22 points. SU basketball lost uh, against Virginia Tech last night 63-67 to fall to eight and seven. Elijah Hughes led, to the t led the team with 18 points. In upcoming games, the girls and boys varsity bowling team plays Fulton today at 3.30. Good luck to the Spartans. Well, that's about all we have for today, so. Wait, 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 really fast. Luke, who do you have playing in and winning the Super Bowl? I have the 49ers and the Ravens and the Ravens with the Ravens, Ravens winning. Wow. That was not English, and that was also a terrible pick. Uh, I have the Seahawks and the Ravens with the Ravens winning. Not sure how that's terrible if we agreed on who's winning. Listen, Luke, this is why I'm the smart one. Anyways, have a fantastic day.